Two concepts I'm a huge fan of are procedural things and automation, so the topic of this video will be a combination of both. But before we get into it, let's talk a bit about lighting. Having at least a basic understanding of the different combinations of colors, intensities and positions of lights in your scene can and will affect the final result is a key component to creating good looking renders. Lighting can literally be the most influential factor of an artwork. One lighting setup that is particularly helpful to know about is the three-point lighting setup. Three-point lighting is one of the standard methods for lighting a subject by using three light sources, where each light source has a specific function. The key light is the main light source for lighting the subject. The fill light is used to soften the shadows cast by the key light. And the backlight, or rim light, is used to create a greater separation between the subject and the background. Now, while each light has an outline purpose, it's better to think of it as guidelines rather than set in stone instructions that needs to be followed at all times. And that's where the subject of this video comes in. Because by using geometry nodes, we can create a three-point lighting system that enables us to very quickly try out near limitless combinations of positions, intensities, and colors of lights. And while the system isn't meant to replace deliberate and precise lighting, I find it to be extremely useful for providing inspiration and starting points for creating proper lighting setups. One of the greatest aha moments I've had while using Yomri Nodes so far is the realization that the things you're able to manipulate within the system isn't restricted to just things with geometry. In fact, by using the object info node, or collection info node, you can even manipulate things like empties, cameras, and, for the purposes of this video, lights. So let's create a new collection and name it Lights. Then add an area light to it. I will set the power to 500 for now, but once we are finished with the system, we can always adjust the powers and colors of the lights as we please. If you just want a setup with neutral lights, you can skip to the next part. Otherwise, duplicate the light four times. For each of these four new lights, I will change the colors to a pale green, a pale blue, a pale red, and a pale yellow. This just makes it so that the finish system provides combinations of colors as well. Once you're happy with the lights, disable the lights collection. Moving on to geometry nodes, add a plane in the scene, and then head over to geometry nodes workspace. And press new to add a new node tree. Disconnect the group input, then add a mesh line. and set the count to 3, and the offset C to 0. We will use this mesh line as points to instance the lights on, but first we need to set the positions of the points. To do this we need a set position node, a vector math node set to multiply, a combine XYZ node, and three random value nodes. We will also need an index node, a math node set to add, and another math node set to multiply. Start by connecting the index node to both the add node and the multiply node. Then connect an empty socket of the group input to both the add node and the multiply node as well. Press N to open the property sidebar and change the name of the socket to setup index. the type to integer. The random value node has a seed socket, and by using different values as a seed, we will get different random values as output. Connect the add node to the seed socket of the first random value node, then set the min and max values to negative 2 and 2 respectively. Then connect it to the x socket of the combined xyz node. Next, connect the multiple node to the seed socket of the second random value node, Set the min and max values to negative 2 and 2. Then connect it to the y socket of the combined x and z node. Connect the setup index socket to the seed socket of the last random value node. 
change the min and max value to 0 0.1 and 2. Then connect it to the C socket of the combined XYZ node. Finally, connect the combined XYZ node to the vector multiply node and change the values to 10. Then connect that node to the position socket of the set position node. What we have created here is a way to randomize the positions of the points of the mesh line by using an input value, the setup index, and the indexes of the points as seeds for the random values. This way, by changing the setup index, we will get a new set of random positions each time. Before we move on, add another combined XYZ node and connect it to the multiply node as well. Then connect the X, Y, and C sockets to the same socket of the group input. And in the property sidebar, change the name of the socket to Lights Distance. This way, we can control how far away from the center the lights will be. Now that we have a system to create random positions, let's instance the lights. By dragging the lights collection from the outliner into the node tree, we automatically get a collection info node containing the lights collection. And by enabling both separate children and reset children, each object in the collection will be treated as a separate object that can be instanced. Add an instance on points node, and connect the collection info node to the instance socket and enable pick instance. We now have lights instance on the points, but there are a few things we need to adjust, so let's start by making the lights point at the center of the scene. Add a position node, and then align Euler to vector node. Connect the position node to the vector socket of the align node, then connect it to the rotation socket of the instance on points node. If we now set the align node to be aligned to C, it will set the rotation of the lights to point towards the center of the scene. Next, let's randomize the scale of the lights. Changing the scale of an area light will affect its intensity and the sharpness of any shadows created by it, so randomizing the scales will create another level of complexity to the system. Since we want to scale the lights uniformly on all axes, we just need a single random value node. Connect the setup index to the seed socket, then connect the random value node to the scale socket of the instance on points node. I found that a min value of 3 and a max value of 20 gives a good distribution of scales, but feel free to experiment. Depending on the scale of the rest of the scene, bigger or smaller values might give better results. Finally, since we have 5 lights in the lights collection and only 3 points in our light system, we need to randomize the light selection as well. Just like with the scaling, we just need a single random value node. Connect the setup index to the seed socket, then connect the random value node to the instance index socket of the instance on points node. The values you use for this random value node isn't super important. Just make sure that the min value is zero and that the max value is at least equal to the number of lights in the light collection. Now you might be thinking, okay, this is cool and all, but am I supposed to recreate this thing every time I want to use it in a project? Yes. No, I'm just kidding. If we move everything to a new collection and call it light setup, we can then append that collection to another project by going to File, Append, and then go to the project with the light setup and open it. Then open the collection folder and select the light setup collection and finally press append. This will add that collection and everything in it to your new project, ready to use. Just don't forget to disable the light collection, since collections are enabled by default when you append them. I hope you found this video useful, and that you learned something new. See you next time.